I swear it's pursuing me. I can feel its existence no matter where I go. I can always feel that wretched being breathing right down my neck. I can undyingly sense it watching down on me. With that face, or should I say, lack thereof. It's been pursuing me for years. Ever since what happened to my family, that should not have happened to them. They did not deserve that. Anyway, I'm presently writing this in a low price motel somewhere in Indiana. Running is all I've understood for the last 15 years. Or at least, if it has been 15 years. All of this started when my family and I moved into Bethel, Ohio. I still remember it like it was yesterday. My family and I have moved around a lot since we came to Ohio. Living with relatives, mostly, and changing schools every month. It took a toll on me. Now that I think about it, it took a toll on all of us. We were all ready to just settle down. My parents found this old house in the middle of town. It was a two-storey house with three bedrooms and one bathroom. I was told that it was a century old. There were six of us at the time. My family consisted of my two little brothers, my sister, my parents and I. It was all going smoothly, unpacking and cleaning up the old dust. After living in the house for around five weeks, I started noticing small, but still very strange things around the house. Things like the sound of footsteps and doors closing by themselves. I didn't give it any second thoughts though. However, when my little brother complained of nightmares of a man with a shadowed face choking him, the real strange thing is, he said that he felt himself being choked. Not that much later, my mother had also experienced terrible things with the being. One day, she was just sitting on her bed and went out of nowhere. She couldn't breathe on one side of her neck like someone was choking her. All of a sudden, the pressure just stopped. And I don't think I slept one sound night in that house after that day. The experiences became progressively more alarming. In the following two weeks, we were terrorised by this strange spirit. Each morning, everyone would awaken with scratches. Well, everyone except for me. One time, it actually pushed my sister down the stairs things were getting too intense. So I decided to do a little research on the house. It turned out that a lot of people had died in that house, to the point where it temporarily even became a funeral home. I had noticed the corner of an old picture, so I pulled it out of the folder that it was contained in. It looked like it was from the early 1900s, but there was something not right about that picture, something that I just could not put my finger on. I looked closer, and that is when I saw it. It was a man in a tuxedo, and his face was nothing but a shadow. It was standing behind a corner of the house, peeking out from the side. Just as I was getting up, there it was, standing inches from my face. I could feel its breath. It smelled of death and decay. I felt panic seep into my body, and I blacked out. The last thing I recalled was a very loud scream followed by a very low-pitched laugh. When I woke up, I was alone. Not a soul was in the house. I searched for years for my family, but I just couldn't find them. I looked all over the fucking country. But inside, I know he took them. They are all dead, with no doubt in my mind, and I'm the only survivor of my family. Why the hell am I still alive? I ask myself that question to this very day. So that is where it leaves us now. I know that this thing is just toying with me. It could take me any time it wanted to. But I feel it just wants to see me suffer. I am not going to give it the satisfaction and I'm going to end it right here. So if anyone is still alive out there, anyone at all, I need to tell you that I'm sorry. I'm so very, very sorry. Some things are never quite what they seem. When one refers to the underworld, we instantly think of demons, fire, brimstone, eternal suffering, and the overpowering odour of sulphur. I can tell you now, it's nothing like that at all. Did you know there's a series of tunnels beneath all civilization? This is somewhat related to the hollow earth theory. Tunnels weave in cryptic patterns and lead to an entirely different world inside of this one. This world is green and lush. 
but mountains riddle the land, making it very easy to get lost. You will live among this world's creatures, and you will likely lose any remnants of sanity. But if you calmly and patiently explore, you will come upon something astonishing. You will find the most beautiful person you've ever seen, nude and shackled to a cliffside. They will look very hungry, and most likely, they will be sleeping very deeply or appear to be in an unconscious state. At this point, you will most likely want to release them. The chain is weak and easy to break, so freeing them will not be a problem. But they are so weak, they won't be able to walk on their own, provided they wake from their deep slumber. Now you have two choices. You may linger here with this being and waste away, or you may take them home and live with you as you had before, only now with a mysterious new housemate. But keep in mind, it would be best to keep your lovely new friend a secret, or something horrible might happen. Go ahead and try to feed them. Try to give them liquid for their thirst. All such things will be spurned, albeit non-violently. They sleep for most of the day. They will not walk upright like a human, they will crawl like an animal. They are mute and unable to speak. Try what you will to hear their voice. They come from a place where there was never a need for human language. Despite this, they will seem to behave in a more and more human manner every day. Although, they may just be mimicking you. Living in the overworld with you, they are more likely to grow ill fast. In fact, they may die. There is only one way to save them. Feed them the only thing they will eat. Blood. Any blood will do. Whether it is animal or human. Animal blood doesn't satiate them for quite as long or as well. Human blood seems to make them the happiest. And most content. This usually means one thing to you. You will become a murderer to see your new pet happy. To keep them content and well fed. And most of all to keep them by your side. If he or she is not fed enough, they will escape and devour whatever appeals to them, only to return to your home and sleep like a full-bellied kitten. Sometimes, though, the being will only eat whatever is nearest, in this case, being one who labelled themselves as their master. The last thing many of them will see is the gnashing teeth of the beauty they had collected and their blood dripping down their sharp, vampiric teeth. No one ever sees it coming. The poor souls. They become lost in the underworld, much as their pet was. Their humanity became lost, and now they are no longer different than what he or she is. Because of those who have ventured to the underworld, these creatures are now among us. They go silent, and only gain the ability to speak. Once they've killed their first human, but enough of my silly story. What I've been meaning to ask you is, who's that quiet stranger you're with? They're rather easy on the eyes. Did you get a good look at their teeth? Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I realise it's a little bit shorter than what I like to get out for you guys, but last week I had a lot of technical and audio issues, so that made recording and editing very hard to the point where I didn't really get a lot done so I do apologize for that but you guys are awesome and so I know you'll be understanding and hopefully next month spooky season is just it I have I have plans so let's hope that those plans go smoothly so if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, maybe share it and leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you in the comment section because I really do like getting comments and it makes my day. I will see you all again very soon.